Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live. I'm Lisa Badeau. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, wrapped up WeFest weekend. Wrapped up kind of a wet weekend as well. Uh, we're going to talk about the forecast here in just a moment, but I want to remind you on this Monday, August 8th, uh, you can watch and listen to this live stream anytime you want throughout the day. Uh, you can find it on Inforum's YouTube channel. You can also check out your favorite podcast platform. It's a great way to get the news and really weather to help you start your day. Just visit Inforum.com slash podcast and look for the Inforum Minute. Okay, just touching on your forecast uh, this morning, Jared Piepenberg was in for Lydia. Cool morning. If you haven't stepped outside yet, it is a little bit chilly. Uh, it was in the upper 40s for some of us, the 50s. Don't worry, even though it feels like fall, this weekend kind of felt like fall. Uh, summer's not over. Uh, we're going to have a nice turnaround today. Uh, Jared's forecast calls for a high uh, near 80. Tomorrow's actually going to be the warmest day of the week, and we're going to be in the upper 80s, so still flirting with 90. Um, kind of up and down for temperatures throughout the week, but looks pretty nice after that wet weekend. Mostly dry and pretty quiet for the next couple of days. Okay, let's uh, check out some of your uh, top headlines for this morning. Fargo police had a very busy weekend, and their investigations continue today as well. Three separate shootings happened over the weekend. The most recent one was uh, right around the First Avenue North and University Drive area. Uh, it happened yesterday morning around 2.30. Officers tell us they found a glass door at a business was shot out and shattered. Uh, just a short time later, they were alerted that a shooting victim had been taken to a local hospital. From what we're hearing right now, that person is expected to be okay. We are still working to learn if there are any suspects in that shooting. Now, the other two shootings actually happened on Saturday with one of them in downtown Fargo. Police were called to the Bell Bank parking lot, which is just off North Broadway, right around 2.30 Saturday morning, where they found a person with a gunshot wound to their butt. Uh, that person is also expected to be okay. Witnesses say the shooter is a man between the ages of 25 and 30 who may have left the scene in a red vehicle. And the third shooting, that one actually happened uh, near Fleet Farm on Saturday, right around midnight. Uh, a 39-year-old man was checked into the hospital with a gunshot wound to his arm. Police at this point are telling us they don't believe those two shootings on Saturday are related, um, but they couldn't give us a description of a suspect for that uh, first shooting that happened near Fleet Farm. We're still working on that, and of course, be sure to join WDAY uh, for our evening newscast. We'll have updates on all of these uh, shootings that happened from over the weekend. The Minnesota State Patrol says five people were hurt, including two young boys, ages five and eight, in a crash that happened in Beltrami County. Uh, that crash happened around 7.30 last night. Troopers say a car driven by a 48-year-old man from Cass Lake uh, crossed the center line and hit a car driven by a 23-year-old from Redby. All five people did have to be taken to a hospital in Bemidji, but at this point we're hearing that their non-life-threatening injuries are expected to be okay, uh, expected to recover. Uh, looking for information on this one, uh, we're hearing from deputies in northern North Dakota that they're looking for a man suspected of stealing a car and then leading police on a chase. Rowlett County deputies say Tyler Lenore was part of that chase on Friday. Um, they confirmed that he had stolen a car. They've not confirmed if that stolen car was used in the police chase, but they are asking anyone who sees Lenore or has any information on this incident, uh, whether it's the chase or the stolen car, to call the Rowlett County Sheriff's Office. That number is 701-477-5623. A sad story here out of western North Dakota this morning. A man walking along a busy North Dakota highway out in the western part of the state was killed when he was hit by a car. That crash happened along Highway 83, which you know is a pretty busy highway, um, about seven miles south of Minot. It happened just after 10 last night. The North Dakota Highway Patrol tells us the 36-year-old Montana man was walking along the highway when a car came up from behind him, hit him, and he was killed. The driver of that car, a 58-year-old woman from Watford City, and her passenger were not hurt. Uh, I noticed a lot more motorcycles on the roads this weekend. Of course, it was the first uh, weekend of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Uh, we do have some early numbers in. It sounds like that first weekend uh, proved to be deadly down in Sturgis. The South Dakota Highway Patrol is reporting five crashes happened on day one of the rally. One person was killed six others hurt. This story is getting a lot of buzz. It broke over the weekend. A former Miss America from North Dakota is trying to gather enough signatures to become the first congresswoman from North Dakota 
in Washington, D.C. You'll remember this name, Kara Mund, announced her run for a seat in the House over the weekend. She's running as an independent. Now, to officially enter the race, she does need to submit 1,000 petition signatures to the Secretary of State by September 6th. Um, if she does that and the petition is valid, she would be running against Republican incumbent Kelly Armstrong and Democratic candidate Mark Haugen in November's election. Well, it looks like the U.S. will make a push to go greener. The House is poised to pass a bill containing the biggest plan to combat climate change in U.S. history. Uh, the House is likely to approve this bill as early as this week. It already passed an earlier version, and every Democrat in the Senate voted for the final plan. It would, would provide tax credits for things like solar panels, uh, electric HVAC systems, and extends a, a credit for electric vehicles. Um, it also invests at least $60 billion in domestic clean energy solutions. Uh, this bill is actually called the Inflation Reduction Act, but economists differ on uh, whether it actually lives up to that name. In addition to green initiatives, it seeks to rein in prescription drug prices for Medicare recipients, and it would impose a minimum 15% tax on large corporations. So you're going to hear a lot about this today and over probably the next couple of days. Um, we do have some updates on that uh, passing the Senate. Voices from both North Dakota and Minnesota sounded off on that landmark legislation, historic vote. Uh, North Dakota senators openly opposed the bill. Uh, Republican Kevin Kramer calling it fiscally irresponsible and saying it could damage American pharmaceutical and manufacturing Senate, um, sectors. Republican John Hoven, actually, we have a statement from him as well. Uh, he actually even proposed an amendment that would stop the bill from going into effect until inflation eased, but that amendment was blocked. Um, on the Minnesota side, Democrat Amy Klobuchar said the bill addresses the most pressing challenges of our times uh, while taking a huge step towards lowering the cost of prescription drugs. Tina Smith, uh, I should point out, also supported the bill, saying it will lower energy costs and spur the economy. Another big national headline, California firefighters right now are continuing to battle that McKinney fire. Uh, it's now burned tens of thousands of acres. The largest wildfire in the state so far erupted less than two weeks ago, grew rapidly, um, only 40% contained this morning. Uh, this is good news. A new type of breast cancer treatment is now on the market. The FDA has approved the medication called Enherto, which is for women with advanced breast cancer that uh, cannot be surgically removed or has spread to other parts of the body. Uh, in clinical trials, the medication nearly doubled the window of time that women could live with their cancer and it would not get any worse. A recent report found Americans are piling up debt at a greater rate than economists first predicted. $40.1 billion of debt was reported in June. That's actually a spike from May's revised number of $23.8 billion. Okay, Dom Izzo is already in the house. Of course, you want to tune in uh, this morning, 9 to 11, on WDAY Extra, also on Inforum.com. It's got lots to talk about here on this Monday morning. It's opening day for MSUM uh, Moorhead football. We're going to be checking in with the Dragons head coach before they hit the field for the first time. And also, a story that WDAY broke on Friday. There's a new plan for a three-class basketball system in North Dakota. Uh, he's going to visit with one of the architects of the new plan and why this plan has some real steam behind it. I read a little bit about it. Um, very interested being a Class B uh, uh, girl from North Dakota. So that's going to be a very interesting discussion. Would love to hear how they kind of break that down and, and see uh, what they think about it actually happening. Plus, Jeff Kolpak stops by for a first week update on NDSU at fall camp. So lots to talk about on Hot Mike this morning from 9 to 11. And... Like I said, that's on Inform.com, a great must-read for you. Uh, Dave Olson article on Inform.com this morning, as we're just a few weeks away now from the start of the new school year, he has a look inside the giant new Moorhead High School that's under construction. Uh, when students return to classes in late August for the 2022-2023 school year, they'll be returning to the existing high school while work continues on phase one of the new high school project. So lots of new details in there. Check that out at inforum.com. And don't forget, for 99 cents a month for your first three months, you can get an all access pass to inforum.com. Just go to inforum.com slash subscribe to get that deal. Okay, that's the place to go for uh, one-stop shopping for all of your local news and weather, but you can also join us tonight. We already have uh, crews working here this morning on this Monday morning. 
Join us for our evening newscast. We have you covered. It all starts at 4 this afternoon, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And, of course, wake up with us every weekday morning for First News. We're on from 5 to 7. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this Facebook Live.